I don't see a big uh, red light, Will. I don't see one. <laughs> so I trust nothing. Well, it's happening right now. I see it. You see a big red light? I do. Or a small red light? Um, both. Oh. Yeah. We'll take it. It's recording. I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when, uh, right. when the public sees it. Yeah. For those of you that are wondering what the hell we're talking about. We uh, recorded an episode. Well, we didn't record an episode. That's really weird when that happens. It's like... Yeah. It in, doesn't exist, actually. It's like in some other... They just float like that. Whatever that was just floats off somewhere. As a conversation, unrecorded. However, like when you're recording, you're, you have this awareness that you're recording. With the intention of publishing. And your conversations outside of recording travel and behave differently than the ones that are recorded. And then, yeah. so therefore, the missing conversation that was recorded in our minds but not recorded in reality remains recorded in our minds mm -hmm. exclusively. Wow. That went deep. Well, it's quickly. like, yeah, no, but I mean, you know what I mean? Like we, it's funny, funny enough though, it's really not recorded in our minds because what do you even remember about it? We still have uh, the stories. We have logs. We, we no, I, I understand it. that. But to what but extent? We don't have a transcript. But to, to what extent do you remember the details of what was discussed? That's the way, that's the part I'm going on. Mm. It just showcases the differences between video evidence and a memory and how flimsy a memory is. Mm -hmm. So you'd be like, okay, yeah, we talked about that, 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 and that, but you don't even remember the angle you took on it. You don't even remember the dialogue surrounding it, comparisons that were made. You might approach the exact same thing a completely different way today because you're just in a different mental framework. Yeah, sure. But you would have been on the record previously of having the other approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be wildly different if we filmed the exact stories today. Exact same show, different day, different mood, different weather, different people in the studio, different dogs different breakfast yeah just a whole different mood you might say it's a whole different ball game yeah some would say apple finally got sued over the air tag stuff we talked about it 47 times here on the show how we're like hmm seems a little risky when they start talking about air tags and then launched it and then only people with iphones knew if they were being tracked or an air tag had been placed on them and then apple put out the app for android so that those people could also know if they had 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 an air tag planted on them and then air tags started to get shoved into cars when people wanted to steal them and sort of track their whereabouts they'd look at a nice luxury car put an air tag so there was all these different ways that air tags were being used stalking well i guess absolutely mostly. yeah stalking was uh well i mean all those are forms of stalking yeah really any air sure. any air tag that doesn't belong to you that is then on you, you're now effectively being stalked. Yes. Instantly. Tagged. That's instant stalking. Uh-huh. Uh, now, the thing was, people were wondering to what extent it was Apple's responsibility because you're sitting there and saying, well, this, they just built the technology. Humans are weird, and they're going to do weird human things. Uh, and it's not like it runs rampant. But, but 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 Apple is also an enormous corporation, and because of that, they're a target. Now, I know they got all these amazing lawyers, but also there's other lawyers that wouldn't mind taking a crack at them because it's such a huge potential payout. They might just be like, shut up already. Mm -hmm. Take the money. Shut up already. I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just, just pure speculation. So we were thinking, okay, maybe this is going to happen where somebody is stalked or is damaged in some way and an air tag is, is found to be involved in some fashion, and then it lands on Apple's doorstep. Well, we have, uh, I guess, a lawsuit now. Apple is being sued by two women over air tag stalking, with the company accused of making it too easy for exes to track their movements. 
The case could form the basis of a class action lawsuit. You have two, two becomes four, four becomes eight. You see what I'm doing with the math here, Will? Yeah. This is scary stuff. Well, it can be hard to be the first one to come out and be and be like, you know what? I hold them accountable to a certain extent. It can be hard to be the first one. Second, also still hard, a little bit less hard. But by the time you get up to number 47 on the uh, class action, everybody's like, yeah, throw, I'll throw my hat in there. Mm -hmm. uh, in a separate case, police are being sued for conducting an alleged illegal search after they raided a property based on an iPhone vaguely located using Find My technology, law enforcement, technology, criminal activity. The more integrated uh, technology becomes in our lives, the greater the likelihood that this crossover continues. Mm -hmm. uh, AirTag stalking became an issue very soon after the launch of, of the device, not because tracking devices were a new thing, but because of the high-profile launch. And the way that Apple describes something, pretty much anyone can understand, pretty much anyone, <clears throat> everyone now becomes exposed to a technology which previously may have been slightly more niche, including criminals. They go, they're watching the keynote too, Will. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not. Are they? Even criminals watch the keynote. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Millions of people watch the keynote. How many millions you got to put together before you have somebody shady in the group? It's just in the nature of the business. Uh, an ex-boyfriend of one of the women who filed the lawsuit planted an air tag in the wheel well of her car and was able to find out where she had moved to avoid his harassment, according to the proposed class action complaint filed Monday in federal court in San Francisco. The other woman said her estranged husband tracked her movements by placing an air tag in her child's backpack. Oh, man. In one instance, an ex-boyfriend used a device to track and shoot a woman in Akron, Ohio. In another, a woman in Indianapolis, Indiana, hid an air tag in her ex-boyfriend's car, followed him to a bar, then ran him over. <laughs> All of these stories are just dark, very dark. Dark and ugly. You never and... hear the stories that are just pleasant because it actually works, the technology, but, you know... It's always these brutal stories. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, the more brutal it is, the more likely it is to make news. I'm sure there's plenty of times in which it's been used for a positive purpose. The air tag was like, oh, man, I found my luggage. I thought it was lost. Mm -hmm. Are people putting these on their on their dogs that go missing and stuff? Yeah, Because right? sure. there's like a collar attachment I I heard of. I don't know how safe it is. On their keychains. Yeah, whatever. You know. Um, so there's probably a thousand stories like that, but you know that's not going to rise to the no, top. No. Well, you've been on no, the internet no. in 2022, sir. Class action lawsuit sir, there. Sir, hazmat suits and... <sighs> hazmat suits? I'm just, I'm describing the internet in 2022 to you. Are you wearing one on the internet? I'm just saying, like, nobody was saying hazmat suit, like, four years ago. They were, it was like a, uh... Maybe a Halloween costume or something. And now it just pops up on your social media. You're looking at like China protests and um, conflict is what I'm trying to say here, Will. Got it. I'm trying to say conflict is the hottest. As, maybe it's always been hot. It's always been burning in the background. It just. But uh, now it seems like it's very extreme. Or maybe we're, yeah. Maybe we're noticing it, or, or or maybe it's maybe the the balance has shifted in the sense that the exposure is almost permanent, in the sense that the black boxes that we carry in our pockets deliver it like an IV drip, and we're just gonna become numb. You're feeling numb, Will. <laughs> No, that's something else that's causing that. Yeah, right here. Tim Cook confirms Apple will buy TSMC chips manufactured in Arizona. Uh, what is that? Next door to Texas? Geography lesson. Close enough. We were talking Texas because we were talking Tesla and we were talking Trump. Mm. <laughs> we're talking Texas, <laughs> Tesla, and Trump. You see, I put the three T's together. Yeah. Trump was, he was down there visiting Tim. See how I'm putting another T in there for you. I could have said Cook, but I said Tim because Timmy Cooks. Okay. Uh, Timmy Cooks? Am I right? No, not Timmy Cooks. Jimmy Cooks. <laughs> Jimmy Cook? Yeah, featuring 21 Savage by Drake. Oh, okay. 
I'm just, I'm just trying to put it all in there for you. I got it. Trump goes to Texas to visit Timmy when they started to manufacture the Mac Pro there. And they said, oh, well, assemble, I should say. And they said, oh, in the States, we're going to do stuff. And people were like, really? You can do tech stuff in the States? And Tesla was like, yeah, we've been doing it. Hmm. And they were like, but smartphones? You can't do that in the States. And Timmy was like, you can. But then it was a little underwhelming because it was a, a small volume product for Apple. And it sure, it sure wasn't AirPods or iPhones. Well, now you got TSMC who's saying, no, 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 it's for real. Apple CEO Tim Cook today confirmed that Apple plans to purchase chips from U.S.-based TSMC factories that are being constructed in Arizona. Cook was in Arizona at the announcement of TSMC's investment in the state, which was also attended by U.S. President J -j 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 Joey Biden. <laughs> and now, thanks to the hard work of so many people, these chips can be proudly stamped made in America. It's a visual that you want to have. Yeah. Stamped made in America. Just you know what I think about when it's made in America? Um, Ford. You know that big plaque that falls onto the ground? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like Ford Tough. Build, That's what I think build of uh, Ford America. Tough. That's just you because you have a Bronco now. <laughs> that's like, that's hey, your thing man, now. Hey. You're, you're made in America now because of your uh, Bronco. Yeah. You're driving around. <laughs> Built for tough. Yeah. It's just like They it paint a really good picture. Burned in there from the time you were young. The advertising, that's why they got to get you when you're young. You're wondering, why is it built for tough? You're trying to watch uh, Sesame Street. No, Will, because yeah. one day you'll be built for tough because Ford's going to still be there. Yeah. So when you think made in America, you think of Ford, and I'm sure, yeah. and I don't think Ford minds. Well, the, this whole premise, this like, They'll this remind black you. giant hitting the ground, cracking the ground, metal, Metal smoke. and ground cracking, that's how you view America. Yeah, built tough. <laughs> that's what it is. And the chips are coming. Well, in this case, it's TSMC that is built for tough. Yeah. And it's going to be made in America. People were people were saying, are you really going to make this investment? Like, are these buildings going to be empty? We've seen weird stuff happen before with other investments, and they couldn't do the staffing, and then there was other things. Like, running it is tougher than coming up with the concept in the first place. Mm. TSMC obviously manufactures all of the chips used in Apple's iPhones, iPads, Macs, and other devices. Of course, we're talking about a time in 2022. We mentioned the word conflict, potential conflict, uh, interfering uh, possibly with the production of these goods. You're seeing the diversification of assembly happening for companies like Apple. They say, a oh, little too much China, a little too much here and there. They move to India, a little bit in Vietnam. Uh, douse, uh, sprinkle a little bit in Brazil. Maybe we should manufacture in the United States. Like the more places, the better redundancy. That one goes down, slows down. Hazmat suits show up. We go over here. We go over there. Nothing will shut down our industry. I wonder if that'll change the price of iPhones, MacBooks, stuff like that. Are you catching my reference here? My, I do, yeah. No, no, my, but obviously it still costs. No, no, no. Something. My, my, my. Like, are yeah, you picturing? Industry, yeah, yeah. Okay, but are you picking Just up the whole mass manufacturing? Yes. Process. Yes. All that it's like Bugs Bunny. Stuff, yeah. It's 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 Looney Tunes, is what it is. Yeah, Acme stuff. It's Looney Tunes, but it's anvils they make, and it's not the first time we talked about this on the show because this has obviously made a lasting impression on me when I was a child. Mm. Anvil after anvil being pumped out in order to fall on the road runner. Yeah, constantly. <laughs> but it ends up being on the coyote. That's Wiley Coyote you're talking yeah. about there, Will. Oh, yeah, but Man. Simpler times, I guess. Mm -hmm. That was all you had to contend with back then. Today's sponsor, HelloFresh. Take the stress out of mealtime. HelloFresh makes it easy to create your own appetizing meals. You can put together something that you probably wouldn't even approach on your own, like uh, honey butter BBQ pork chops. You might not approach that on your own with mashed sweet potatoes and lemony green beans. Actually, that spaghetti with chicken looks kind of good too. Look at that. Uh, Brussels sprouts, 
toasted panko and chives. See, that's the thing though, Will. If you were left to your own devices, you would just throw some tomato sauce on there, which there's nothing wrong with that. But you mix it up, all of a sudden, it's a little meal times a little exciting, a little different. It could be a one pan Santa Fe pork taco. Like, listen, it's endless over there and you're always trying something new and it's incredibly easy to put it together. It could be 30 minutes, could be as little as 20 minutes in some cases. It's all ready to go. Fresh ingredients. You're eating fresh. You're eating exciting. It's HelloFresh. Quality is HelloFresh's main priority. Ingredients travel from the farm to your home in less than seven days, so you know they're fresh. Short on time? Look for HelloFresh's quick and easy options like 20-minute meals and easy cleanup dishes. Big on flavor and easy on effort. These time-saving solutions mean more time with friends and family around the holidays. I took that option and I highly recommend the Mexicali beef and black bean soup. It can be done in one pot in under 20 minutes. It's got intense, punchy flavor that's paired well with the crunchy bite with its blue corn tortilla chips. You can have it with toast, you can have it with rice. It's a very warm dish for the holidays. Go to hollowfresh.com slash lulater18 and use the code lulater18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. That's hollowfresh.com slash lulater18 and use the code lulater18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. Thank you to HelloFresh. Also sponsored by Audible. Guys, just on a road trip. I was with the old uh, Tesla self the, Tesla. the old Tesla self driving. Yeah, that old thing. But Audible is actually not just audiobooks, it's also all types of audio content, including podcasts and so on. It's actually a good deal because if you were trying to buy all these books, if you enjoyed listening to books, if you were to buy all these books, it would cost you a lot more than the subscription. And so because you have the subscription, you end up listening to more, maybe reaching into categories that you wouldn't necessarily reach into. I mean, it's just full of tremendous information, Audible. And it lets you take your drive or your commute and turn it into something seemingly productive, whether it's personal development, science, engineering, history, I'm into the history. You go check it out and you try it for free. You can't go wrong, it's Audible. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Members also get full access to a growing selection of included audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts. You can download or stream our included titles all you want. I'm currently listening to The Deepest Dive. It's the ongoing search for flight MH370 that disappeared in 2014. Let Audible help you discover new ways to laugh, be inspired, or be entertained. New members can try it for free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash lulater or text lulater to 500, 500. That's audible.com slash lulater or text lulater to 500, 500 to try audible free for 30 days. Audible.com slash lulater. Apple car project scaled back and delayed. Oof. Won't feature full self-driving capability. What? Well, then why are you doing it? I just had a road trip to Montreal, and the thing, I did not interfere with full self-driving at all on no the Model S. I didn't touch no it. Way. Well, I mean, I touched it when they told me to touch it. They said, you got to touch it. Uh, are you alive? You got to charge it, though. That's the voice of my car. That's the, <laughs> you got to touch it. Though. You, you got to touch it. We're alive. You're, are you alive? Touch it. It's yelling at me. You understand? Reprimanding me. Uh... I didn't, I, all the lane changes, all the exits off the, uh, uh, off the highway. The, the merging and exiting off the highway. Everything, everything. That's, uh, and, and, and Will, the, the, even beyond that, the, ma the routing of the supercharging and then mm -hmm. just taking me to Kingston right to the supercharger. Like, this is your best path. We're going to charge now. You mind? I don't mind. Let's go charge. Um, I, so what's your reliability rating? It's high, man. I did one trip. Let's let's all just uh, Montreal. take her down That's a notch. That's like, what, a six-hour drive? It's a drive, but it's okay. mostly highway, and we all know it does best on the highway. Sure. And even the hotel I was staying at, and sort of, I wasn't, like, in downtown Montreal, which, of course, would cause a greater complexity. But still, in and around town, the whole, the whole thing, the... Let me tell you what it did for me. It gave me, it's not that I wasn't paying attention, by the way. Sure. Like, I bet you my driver rating is probably high. Uh, 
what it gives you though is when that fatigue sets in a little bit and i don't mean like necessarily tiredness just the mental fatigue of driving just the kind of complacency that builds over hours of driving when you're just kind of like, you're watching, but you're not really what You know what I'm saying here? Yeah, yeah. You're kind of glazed a little bit. You're, you're, you're a glazed donut. You're not focused. Your eyeballs. Yeah. No, I hear you. Are turning into Krispy Kreme donuts. Delicious. Okay. Um, anyway, and then, but you know you have eyeballs all around you. And so you have this. Did you feel safe? You feel safer. So long as you're watching, you feel safer because you're you're like, oh, I got, I'm doubled down. Any close calls? It sounds like you want a horror story that no, didn't no, happen. No, I, no, I do want to hear okay. the experience. It's time for me to get to the truth. I almost yeah. died 17 times. No, it never happened. Uh, one thing that seemed to consistently uh, interact with the full self driving. In what I would say was maybe an overly cautious way was when you would have a way station for transport trucks. Okay. Because the way those are set up on the side of the highway, they're lined up. It's not like a rest stop where it's obviously like buildings in a parking lot. They just go in and come out the mm -hmm. other side and maybe you have two or three lanes. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, the yeah, way yeah. stations. And there were two separate times where the car slowed down when it noticed those way stations and it seemed to possibly misinterpret or just be extremely conservative about those trucks on the side of the road. Like, I don't know if it was wondering if they were coming back, if these were lanes that it didn't see previously or what, but it would start to slow, like beyond the previous setting. Mm -hmm. And then you'd kind of like look around, you'd be like, what? And my kids would be like, what? And then I would just hit the accelerator and it would act as an override and we would just continue on. And then the other one is pylons, which I already knew about the pylon thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not that it doesn't see pylons. It's its behavior around py pylons isn't extremely consistent. So what I mean by this is the distance that it keeps, if the pylons aren't placed in a straight line, if one of them juts out or whatever it might be, uh, sometimes there's an, you've, you're, you're feeling like I should probably put, do it, have an input here, like just in case, mm -hmm. but there, you know, for me, my hands were primarily on the wheel anyway, not the wheel, the yoke, because, uh, I'm being asked to, to put them back there if I leave them off for too long anyway. I'm just like, I just found a spot to rest it. And then what that does for you is if anything, if you even if you're wondering if something weird is going to happen, you feel as though you have the ability to override it in a moment's notice. Mm. As it, and, and so you, you're observing the behavior of the car uh, as a pilot mm -hmm. instead of c completely controlling it. You're observing its behaviors. It, it's actually a much different experience. I would say, than, than driving yourself, managing the accelerator. And even with the steering going beyond any type of adaptive cruise system where, it, you know, even when you pull over to a supercharger, let's say, like when I got into Kingston, it's really close to the highway. However, it's a couple of weird turns you know, as you spin back around and... Uh, one of them happens pretty rapidly. You could easily miss it. But when you have autopilot on, you know you can't miss it. Or I should say full self-driving. You know you can't miss the turn. I I'm sure you could, by the way. But at least in this case, it's it's uh, more preemptive. And you're confident or your confidence level goes up that this is not a concern of yours. Much in the same way as nav navigation felt in the early days. Mm. When you first got navigation, you're like, wow, I know where to go. Mm -hmm. Full self-driving is another, another layer to that. Yeah. Where it's not only do you know, and, and there's other funny things too. Like it announces what you're supposed to do, even though it knows full self-driving is on. So like turn right here, but you know <laughs> that you don't have to because it's, it's going to. It's telling itself. But it is also kind of nice to know what it's about to do. Right, right. And so anyway, some of these right-hand turns, some of these left-hand turns, they're not mint. 
they're a little comical at times and and if anything overly conservative if anything like you could have gone but it didn't go mm. and and so on so i had some experience with superchargers i had some experience with full self driving and it, if anything i would say it has um it has shed even uh, more positive light on what's going on with tesla for me all right based on the well i didn't again it's the the problem was i've i've only had so much time to invest in it and so many opportunities for these type of trips but this seemed like a perfect scenario it was a perfect scenario yeah to give it a real crack and i only got the full self-driving thing really recently that it rolled out mm -hmm. just what like mid-november and this this trip comes up and i'm like okay perfect test bed for it and at least that uh trip and those conditions that's another thing to mention conditions play a role we had mild conditions uh good visibility mm. etc but um my feedback on that and that particular experience is like this stuff is pretty amazing pretty good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that limited because there was a thing i know i've seen the clips it's hitting the the uh i'm making a left-hand turn and i'm looking at the the curb and I'm just yeah. like you're just oh, gonna hammer that you're gonna yeah. hammer that curb and it does take those turns a little quick it kind of accelerates through the turn as you should but accelerates into lane Full changes speed. and it's like anything else you're gonna your confidence level go up the longer it's able to perform without a hiccup yeah i should also mention our roadways here are pretty good in general and that's gonna vary from place to place mm -hmm. so we're talking we, we just have snow that snow is going to be an interesting but, one yeah yeah but like the 401 from it's a straight Toronto shot. to Montreal. Yeah, it's very easy to drive. It's it's you know well lit and painted and I don't know. I mean, there's traffic on it. Not that I had no traffic, but anyway, I'd be really surprised if Apple doesn't take a crack at full self driving. But that's what this report suggests. Apple has scaled back its Apple Car project, and the company no longer plans to release a fully self. I'll get. By the way, I'll give you more reports in the future. It's a very okay, small I'm sample. Glad. Very yeah. small sample size. I don't want anyone to go run out and start buying things. Uh, you know, get, although if you buy, if you get a Tesla right now, you really can't go wrong because um, there's a high demand for these things anyway. Okay, you, yeah. you should know from experience, Will, you can't stop buying cars. Well, yeah, it makes me want to um, subscribe to the full self-driving. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing is I and I don't want people to start doing things based on my one trip to Montreal. Well, you're, you're dead. Oh. I'm influenced. I'm trying to like just downplay it a little bit because it it's so fresh, right? It just happened yeah. for me. Like this is there are people out there that were part of the beta way earlier, and I'm sure they have tons more findings than I do about the complexities of it. And they probably have entire YouTube channels discussing where they're finding failures. Mm -hmm. Um but I just got to give a shout out to the engineers in general because that's the one thing, myself, my kids, we look at the system and you look at the dash and you see the calculations and computations going on and you say to yourself, amazing ach like achievement, uh, incredibly ambitious regardless. Mm -hmm. So that's, I just want to put that piece. All right. Um, nice words. Anyway, so in the case of the Apple car, Apple wanted to create a self-driving car without a steering wheel. So we're talking full, what is it, level five. Uh, or pedals, but has decided such a plan is not feasible at the current time. The vehicle will have guided driving features that work on highways, but it will not be able to operate entirely on its own at all times. The car will have an Apple-designed custom processor the power, to power AI functionality similar to the Mac, iPhone, and iPad. The chip is equivalent to four of the highest-end Mac chips and is nearly production-ready. It will include a custom array of LiDAR sensors, radar sensors, and cameras, which will be able to provide the car with positioning information, lane data, and orientation compared to people and objects. So it's going to have all the smart things you're looking for. It's just not going to be level five with no steering wheel and no pedals. Mm -hmm. Rumors suggest that the car could launch as soon as 2025, but it's now expected in 2026 at the earliest, with Apple aiming to sell a consumer model for under 100000 You know that means they'll never deliver under 100000 mm. They say we're aiming at. 
Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they approach such a thing. I know 2026 sounds far away. It's really not that far away in the development of products like this. And Although I know they've been talking about it since 2014, which then it is a really long time. Mm. But they were, uh, they took their time with the phone as well. I mean, it was a different era. Different people were in charge. I'm really curious to see how they would deliver on something like this. Manufacturing, where does it take place? Is it another for, built for tough in America? Uh, will they prioritize shipments of the higher end versions for the people who want to pay a billion dollars like every other EV maker has done? Mm. Uh, will they be able to have a different approach? Is their scale and are their pockets so deep that they can uh, deliver something in a, in a way that others haven't been able to? I don't know, Will. Is this a bigger launch than the iPhone, you think? I just had this feeling while I was driving uh, on this road trip that uh, what happens in these vehicles over the next three, four years has the potential to feel that way from a um, the public perception. Uh, like... I have gotten so many questions about this thing because, of course, I, I mentioned it to other people that were doing the same trip. I said, well, I want to take the car because full self-driving is there and I want to see how it operates over a long road trip and uh, un unusual um, uh, roadways that are at least unusual to me. And then everybody said, you can't trust that thing, can you? What did you discover? Like Much like how you inquired. And Until you experience it, I feel like. Because your your experience got a lot more comfortable once you use the product, and you could imagine how it could become normal, yeah. and even my kids could imagine a future in which they barely touch the steering wheel. And I know for some people they feel that that is sad. Listen, I think there will continue to be a way to drive a car in the old fashioned sense. It will just become less frequent mm -hmm. in the future. And, but the type of questions, the level of, I don't know if I would call it enthusiasm, intrigue, whatever word you might want to use, it does remind me of the early days of the smartphone era where people were walking around with their first generation iPhones and saying, and it's also a nice camera and watch me pinch to zoom. And I have a whole web browser here. And everyone was like, what? Mm -hmm. The potential. It's, 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 I think it's the areas where we can easily imagine large leaps in progress. Those are the areas that get people excited, talking, questioning, inquiring, mm. and cars, particularly what's happening with electric cars and what's happening with autonomous driving systems. That seems to be the area that has generated intrigue more so than the smartphone marketplace at the moment. Mm. San Francisco reverses approval of killer robot policy. Yeah, I remember that thing. Yeah, that didn't last. Mm. The city's board of supervisors, it's also M. Moon, which is my favorite uh, uh, oh, yeah. profile picture for um, writers on Engadget. Yeah. The city's board of supervisors voted to ban the use of lethal force by police robots for now. Well, once you had all the news stories out and everybody was picturing Terminator situations, yeah. uh, you had to know the heat would be on. In late November, San Francisco's board of supervisors had approved a proposal that would allow the city's police force to use remote-controlled robots as a deadly force option when faced with violent or armed suspects. The super supervisors voted 8-3 to three in favor of making it a new policy despite opposition by civil rights groups, but now... They seem to have a change of heart, have had a change of heart during the second of two required votes before a policy can be sent to the mayor's office for final approval. The board voted eight to three to explicitly ban the use of lethal force by robots, police robots. Well, lethal force, could it, can it shoot rubber bullets? I assume it could. The, the lethal is, is different, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if it goes in there with some other means of... Uh, Injuring or causing what if it's pepper spray it just goes in there. No, no, it has to be Gatling gun. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I listen. I don't know um, I would have to assume there'd be can't it just be like in the cartoons or something where it just shoots like a net with weights on it and, Yeah, and that's it Yeah, but apparently they 
they can't. They want something that's uh, like just completely disabled. Mm. Well, listen, I think this is going to be um, contentious now. Obviously, it was approved, not approved, never made it to the mayor's office. I think there's going to be a lot of resistance to situations like this and to technology like this. Uh, from the jump, when we started looking at those spot robots and and how sensitive uh, Boston Dynamics and other companies around the way that they're... Uh, that their devices are displayed and portrayed. And of course, humans are going to do what humans do and do the opposite of what yeah, is asked. A, this guy put a cannon on the... Of course, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he put a cannon, put a paintball gun, you know, humans. And, and people have even tried to put a uh, rifle on there. However, the video I watched with the rifle, it was not vi not super effective. So is I don't know recoil. Yeah, I don't know what the optimal weaponry even is for this style of robot, but it's probably something different than what a human, like a rifle that a human would hold. Mm -hmm. uh, Amazon is offering customers two dollars per month for letting the company monitor the traffic of their phones. Oh, I did hear about this. A a Amazon has done some unusual things with its devices in the past, uh, subsidizing the cost of some of their tablets and other Fire products in exchange for uh, looking, ads. looking and watching ads. And I assume probably uh, data collection sure. probably played a role in that. Cause once you opt into the ads, who you know, the mm -hmm. whatever tracking and tokens and you know the rest, you know how mm -hmm. the story goes here. Uh, but this is to actually get paid for it. Amazon's ad verification program offers select users $2 per month for sharing their traffic data. It's part of Amazon's shopper panel, an invite-only program that offers users financial rewards. That's like when you used to get those things, do the survey and get paid, and you're super skeptical. You're like, Ugh, I'm scared. Well, this is the real version of that, $2 per month. It doesn't seem like a huge payment. Uh -huh. I don't know. Invite only. The voluntary program could raise privacy concerns over how Amazon handles customer data. Uh, under the company's new invite-only ad verification program, Amazon is tracking what ads participants saw, where they saw them, and the time of day that they were viewed. This includes Amazon's own ads and third-party ads on a platform. Through the program, Amazon hopes to offer more personalized ad experiences to customers that reflect what they have previously purchased, according to Amazon. Your participation will help brands offer better products and make ads from Amazon more relevant. So you're kind of, you're the watchdog. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're finding out how this ad serving is actually happening. And you're kind of reporting on the algorithm to a certain extent. Hey, I'm seeing this. Hey, I'm seeing that. Mm -hmm. and But you're doing it through the sharing of your, of your data. I just don't know who's opting in for the two bucks a month. Hmm. It's limited to the U.S. and U.K., is this like, are you going out of your way to share more data with Amazon for two bucks a month? Not for two dollars. Maybe 20, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it could be helpful for someone. An extra two bucks a day. Two bucks a month, man. Oh, two bucks a month. Is, Is it, it not? Am I, am, am I wrong with this? Two dollars oh. a month. Okay, yeah, that's tough. That's a tough sell. <laughs> two two bucks a day for right. sure. People would do, would uh, yeah. let their okay. data be Never tracked. With, I don't know. Two bucks a month is. Listen, I don't know. Maybe inside of this portal, uh, Amazon Shopper Panel, which I've never looked at, possibly will. It's like uh, an a la carte buffet style way of getting paid by Amazon. Uh, yeah. There's probably a number of activities you can do, and you could just click yes to the two dollar one, and it kind of like it kind of gamifies it, boosts your um, your monthly payout, and people are just like, cool, I don't care, yeah. Check. Might be other perks, I don't know. So, but I, I don't know how compelling that's going to be to the average person. But it, it probably there are probably people who do pretty good on this. Uh, Facebook was giving away twenty dollar gift cards. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for for 13 year olds that were allowing a VPN to track all of their activity. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's bad. Uh, they got caught for that and then it caused all types of issues, but these things happen online. Mm -hmm. They happen online.
Learn how this woman er, around the corner earns $20,000 a month doing nothing but sit at home. Mm. Neuralink is reportedly under federal investigation over animal testing. Reuters said the pressure to advance development has led to needless suffering and death in test animals. And Moon is back with the hot fire today. Shout out. Uh, well, I remember the demo video where they showed, is that a, a baboon? What, what do we have there? Is it a chimpanzee? It's tough to tell from this angle. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's Inspector General is reportedly investigating Neuralink over potential animal welfare violations related to research testing. According to Reuters, internal documents show the staff members have been raising concerns that the company has been rushing animal testing and causing needless suffering and death. The company has killed 1,500 animals, including more than 280 sheep, pigs, and monkeys since 2018. Those numbers don't automatically mean Neuralink is violating the law. And the company has passed all USDA inspections of its facilities. Former and current employees told Reuters, however, that pressure from Neuralink founder Elon Musk to accelerate development has led to faulty experiments and hence death rates higher than they need to be. Oof. It's funny how these things, like everybody wants the advancements, the medical advancements. Better, faster. Exactly. More. But at the same time, that they don't necessarily want to be faced with the reality of developing such things. Yeah. There's going to be um, casualties. Well, 1,500 in the case of these animals, uh, 280, more than 280 sheep, pigs, and monkeys. But then it says 1,500 animals. What are the rest? Mice? They don't, they don't list mice. They're not big enough to be in the same, like, where do they fit in the hierarchy of sheep, pigs, and monkeys? It definitely goes monkeys first. And then sheep next or pigs next? Go ahead, Will. I think pigs. Pigs go next and then sheep are last? Sure, yeah. Damn, dude. Um, You're a stone cold killer over there. <laughs> I don't know. Someone's going to. They're gonna, close, though. It's a close. Sheep and pigs, it's a close one. Yeah, man. Uh, they're making claims like paralyzed people are going to be able to walk again. I don't know how you develop this without uh, testing it. And. How are you test? You know, I yeah. I assume that this is something they need to do. Unfortunately, it seems, however, that the uh, uh, accusation is that the accelerated program is needlessly killing animals. That they're getting they're they're getting too cavalier about it, and then that could be an issue. Of course, I wouldn't know. Earlier this year, the animal rights group. Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine accused the company of botching surgeries that killed monkeys. Neuralink admitted it had killed six monkeys in its joint study with the University of California, Davis, due to issues caused by their experiments. However, they defended their research and said it didn't break any laws. Man. Any, any uh, researchers, scientists in, in the comments here, uh, uh, that can help us understand. I'm sure there's stringent rules and laws around this type of thing, and I don't know to what extent it's monitored. I get, guess they get inspected every so often, but can you imagine, unless you've got video footage, it, it, they're like, well, uh, we, were, we were legally allowed to kill 20 monkeys in this period of time, and they're like, but how did you kill them? And yeah, holy, I guess the workers themselves can report it. You're in a, you're in a, when you're in the research end of things... And isn't the next step human trials? Human. So that's... Uh, human trials. It's getting there. And and what do you think? I mean, probably a human's going to go down once they get to human trials. Uh, somebody's oh, not going to wake up in a certain... Imagine the lawsuit I, I, there. I, 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 we're me, what are we? We're these uh, fleshy buckets. What are we? Yeah. It's uh, susceptible to injury and uh, weirdness at scale. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope they get that sorted. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. In lighter news, I guess. Tesla drivers believe they are experiencing more road rage. Mm, we've seen these type of stories before. <laughs> of course, it's a Dodge Ram that's uh, probably going to get pissed off here in this clip. Look at the exhaust pipe on that thing, too. Mm. That's lovely looking stuff. Um, some Tesla drivers believe that they are experiencing more road rage than usual. The media tries to link it to Elon Musk's Twitter antics, but it seems to be just good old EV haters. Tesla owners are certainly not immune to road rage. Um, we previously reported several in instances of Tesla haters 
rolling coal on Tesla drivers. In one instance, I ended up actually talking with a Tesla hater and it became clear that his hate crime from misinformation about electric vehicles and Tesla. Hmm. What is rolling coal? Is that is that uh, shooting the exhaust fumes? I see, yeah. Roll some coal. So I didn't even know that. Mm. Um, the publication gives five other examples from Tesla owners who say they are experiencing road rage related to their vehicles. I don't know if this is a big enough sample size. Yeah, maybe we need data. This, to this, this. seems this would have to be pretty regional. Tesla drivers interviewed by The Guardian say they've experienced anti-Tesla sentiment, but mo mostly from those who hate electric vehicles rather than Musk specifically. Random rude drivers will swerve in my lane to yell at me or turn a heavy diesel exhaust that blows black smoke. This is in Beaverton, Oregon. Beaverton, Oregon. Is that near Nike headquarters? Is it? I don't know. I could be completely off here. It, I don't feel any of that in this region. It's uh, Nike World Headquarters. That's a weird piece of information that I can't. In Beaverton. It is. Yeah, like, see how I would... Why is this necessary? Because of now? Beaverton? Yeah, Beaverton, Oregon. I just thought it was odd that this guy who they got this report from happened to be in the city, yeah. the town of Nike's headquarters. I don't think it's, like, an extremely large place. Uh, I don't see any of this happening around here. <laughs> There's so many You've never experienced Well, it. there's so many Teslas. Yeah. What are you going to, how are you going to? We still have. You'd be, you'd be rolling coal all day. But we, we do have a lot of pickup trucks here too. It's all pickup trucks and Teslas. <laughs> yeah. And so wouldn't it be like a good uh, But I think sample? that, well, I think there's a lot of people who have both in their driveway. Sure. One of each. Yeah. So I don't see how you could be rolling coal then. Yeah, I've never experienced it either, but maybe someone in the comments can tell us they had a bad experience. If you did have this uh, type of experience, I'd like to know the region. I'd be curious. Mm -hmm. uh, did Tesla just reveal a smaller two-door Cybertruck? The Bronco Killer. Uh, no, I doubt it. What, this drawing is the evidence they have? Yes. <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, not long after unveiling Cybertruck prototype in 2019, Musk started talking about making an electric pickup smaller to fit inside a regular garage. In 2020, the CEO was asked the biggest change in the Cybertruck prototype. He responded that they reduced the size by 3%. Well, that doesn't seem super significant. And they lowered the windowsill height, 3%. It was pretty huge before. Uh, and then Miss Jillian on Twitter says, are we not going to talk about the beautiful artwork of a two-door Cybertruck displayed at the Peterson Museum Tesla exhibit? And of course, uh, this is, this is where a lot of people have been getting up close and personal with the Cybertruck recently. It's on mm -hmm. display. And, uh, above the Cybertruck, there's an image, uh, artist's, uh, image of a Cybertruck, uh, probably an early image. And I don't think this means that there's a two-door Cybertruck coming. No. I think, no, I think it's just an, ins it's inspiration, right? It's the, the rough idea, the shapes. Whenever you're imagining a beautiful car, you seem to imagine it with two doors instead of four, don't you? Uh, yeah. I so, mean, having two extra doors elongates it. And it kind of makes the design a little bit more different. Less, less cool. Four doors has never been as cool as two doors. Yeah, uh, I'm not saying they can't do it. I'm just saying I don't think this drawing specifically is an indication. Uh, even if they did a smaller version, like to compete with, I don't, I, I don't know, like the smaller, smaller truck world, Tacoma slash Ranger slash, uh, what's the GM Canyon? Then I think they still have to have four doors. It would be really surprising if they went with two. But why? Why does this look way better than the real Cybertruck? Two doors, oh, oh, two no, doors. No, no, it's just not the. It not is, it is, dude. It is. It, it's one, the bigger wheels. Dude, it's one, the, once you get down, more roundedness. once you get down to two doors, everything else looks better because yeah. all the proportions change. No, no, that's one component. I, I feel like there's like a a sleekness to this. It's maybe the angle, right? We're coming yeah. from above, sort of, instead of looking at it from the side. Every car has good angles and bad angles. Mm -hmm. Or at least some that are better than others. There, there mm -hmm. might be some sick car that looks good from every single angle. 
But the Cybertruck can look really good from one angle. And then you look at the next one and it just starts, it looks off. Yeah. Like the straight profile, like right on the side of it. It's like, hmm. It's the same way I think that the Model X looks bad. When you look at it right from the side Mm -hmm. or from Mm -hmm. the three quarter rear, from the front, it looks cool. Mm -hmm. And from the front three quarter, it looks cool. Mm-hmm. But this is, like I said, it's every car, even even the uh, Model S and a uh, Model 3. I don't even know. The Model 3 might be the best looking of the bunch. You think so? Well, the, just the shape of it. The shape. What would you What would you say? The Y? It's definitely not the X. I think the S. Yeah, maybe. It's maybe, just longer, flatter. May, yeah, maybe the S, but is it because of the performance a- attributes, like the fact that it's lowered... I think and so. wider, the bigger wheels, cleaner lines. I feel like. Like if they did a Model Three Plaid and it was lowered with fatter tires, and would it not look equally cool? Maybe. And then the Y and the X, they just get more bubbly. They just. They do, yeah. I agree with. They that. just get stretched up. I don't know. It's hard to say. These are designs that have just been. Uh, tweaked over the years sure. and not really overhauled. Uh, and I'm not hating. Like, I just explained how, how many moments ago about all... I said lovely things about the Model S. Mm-hmm. And the Model S, let me just tell you, I, I know it's not the best-looking car in the world, but my God, like, with that hatchback, I'm getting three bags of hockey equipment yeah. in there. In a you car like the space. That performs like that is just ridiculous. I'm putting the seats down. I got cargo for days in there. Mm. And it's not just cargo. It's, it's, it's cargo access that I need. I need a big loading area. Mm. It can't just be long and narrow. It's got to be a big. And when, so when that lid comes up, it's practically like an SUV. It's like a small SUV in terms of cargo mm. on the S. So... There, how about that? I just put a positive thing to go with the negative thing. And be- Would you ever consider a Y or an X just for more height? Uh, yeah, so I so like if you look at the X, there's some troubles with it. Uh, the the you, you either love or hate the rear doors. I just don't know how I would deal with because my rear doors get used on a daily basis if I'm driving it. Okay, I don't know how I would feel about the whole thing going up every time. Oh, right. The call uh, wing doors. And then I look at the trunk. And so if you order the plaid, which is what I have in the S right now, uh-huh. you have to get the six seater. Now, you might be saying, well, don't you want the six seater anyway? You might, but you can't get a, f- a, a, a load floor that's completely flat for bigger loads. Right. You can fold down the two rear seats, but those captain's chairs, they just kind of go forward. They don't fold down. Mm. Okay. okay. Now, of course, uh, you could do the five seater or seven seater, but you can't get that in the plaid. I see. Uh, the five seater would be interesting to me because I typically don't have a lot of passengers, but I love the cargo. Mm. In the five seater Model X, if you fold down the the uh, rear seats, you have a huge cargo capacity. Mm. Um, but anyway, you can see I've investigated such things. The why is interesting because it's actually, it, it's like, it's bigger in some ways, but smaller in some ways compared to the S. Like, I don't think it's quite as wide. Mm-hmm. So it's a funny, bit of a funny in between. And of course you can't get it in the plaid if you want the fast one. Yeah. Well, just maybe wait for the redesign. <laughs> of what? The X? Yeah. I don't know. Is that anytime soon? They're focused on the truck now, which I believe I ordered. So what are we even yeah. talking about? Or yeah. you can get this one. Monroe EV looks like a Tesla Cybertruck and Ineos Grenadier's love child. Wait, Monroe, the same Monroe or is this a different Monroe? Oh, wow. yes. I, we, 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 I, I believe we talked about this. Hang on. Hang on a second. Scroll up a little bit. Yes, I'll get. I would love to have this. Probably the range sucks. Mm-hmm. The electric SUV from Scottish start, startup is coming to the U.S. next year intended for commercial purposes. But looking fit for adventure driving. I mean, the, these the looks on this thing are incredible. But can you imagine drag coefficient over here? <laughs> it's so boxy. More so than the Bronco, too. Oh, my God. It's just like, look how flat that nose is. Yeah. That nose looking like mine shortly after I busted mine. Yeah. Shortly after, like, flat. on impact. That was my nose on impact. Yeah. I had to, like, squeeze it out and kind of rearrange it. But on impact, 
That's what I was looking like. I had a very low drag coefficient. Very. Uh, but look at the suspension and the the, wheels. The, uh, the the wheel and tire combo over there. It's just rugged and beautiful. Yeah. The paint job is looking pure military over here. This is the storage you need. Yeah, that's right. right. The brand new EV only SUV from the UK startup Monroe combines mechanical four wheel drive with electric power. A choice of 295 horsepower and 375 horsepower with 61 kilowatt hour and 81 kilowatt hour battery packs. Uh, just called the MK1, coming to U.S. in a limited run during 2023. Man, that would look so cool in studio. Mm. Totally should get it in studio. Although something that big and heavy, can you imagine it with 300 horsepower? I don't know, man. It's uh, not going to be about speed. And that's also crazy. We're living in a time where we're like, oh, three, 300 horsepower EV is on the lower side mm -hmm. as far as EVs go. Mm -hmm. uh, and they probably want... What do you think they want for it? Is it 100, 150? I guess 120. Okay. Oh, you didn't you don't know yet? I don't know. Okay, let's see. Maybe they're not even going to tell us. It can carry up to 2200 pounds of cargo and tow 7700 pounds. Hmm. Oh, they're not going to tell us the price, are they? It looks a lot like the Bollinger. Oh, yeah. As well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, except this one looks more lifted. Than the Bollinger. It did, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure the price is somewhere in here, or I don't know that we're going to find it anytime soon. Somebody's going to tell us down in the comments. It's very utilitarian, this thing. Like, you're probably missing some smart features when I look at the interior cabin there. <laughs> yeah. It's looking like an old school But it also looks very Land simple. Rover. Yeah. No, I like something about that. Yeah. I'm just saying I don't think the thing is going to be driving itself anytime soon there, Will. Let me uh, look at the price here. Let me try to find the price. Well, I don't know. If, I don't even know if they've announced it, but you can take a crack if you're curious. I know the Bollinger stuff was. Oh, they say they're looking at sixty thousand pound British pounds. That's not bad. I think it's around hundred k. No, is it? I don't know. I know that there's been all types of currency stuff going on, and this is not a um, a, a pair that I compare very often. Okay, so seven, they say it's going to start at seventy three thousand. 290 that's actually pretty affordable you should get it yeah okay we'll see about <laughs> that we'll see if that price if they actually ship that price yeah uh polestar 2 gets an over-the-air performance boost without the hassle of a subscription the ev company is offering a 68 horsepower upgrade to customers for a one-time fee of 1195 Man, this is so wild, this uh, subscription stuff. You mm. Just imagine you're driving along and a pop-up comes on the display, a notification. Hey, we noticed you just passed the car. Yeah, you want to overtake this guy faster? Yeah, we get we, we can provide you an extra 68 horsepower for a uh, one-time deal, 1,195. You're like, yes. <laughs> imagine range. Imagine unlocking range. Oh. You're about to... you're. You, do you want to stop on this trip and charge? Or for a uh, low payment yeah. of $800, you can keep going another 100 kilometers. Honey, we got to get it. Uh, this is the one. It's wild stuff. Uh, anyway, I guess it's better than a monthly fee. <laughs> uh, and I don't know why it feels weirder with its performance as opposed to self-driving. I don't know why that feels weirder. Because even you, you were just like, hey, maybe I'm going to get a self-driving subscription. Because it is just software. The hardware is already installed. In both cases. Yeah. It's a pretty much identical thing, but it feels weirder with performance for whatever reason. Mm. Uh, after paying for the upgrade, customers Polestar 2 EVs will see 0 to 60 uh, acceleration reduction to 4.2 seconds. So they're accelerating faster here, Will. So would you choose the subscription or the one-time fee? Well, with the full self-driving, I did the one-time fee. I, I really don't like the idea of more subscriptions personally. But you can try it instead of buying it up it, front. It's true. It's a good point. Um, yeah, you can see if you like it or not. I just think it's a it's a there's a psychological barrier or, or a a psychological weight mm -hmm. to not having the feature but instead seeing the bill every single it makes you hate anything yeah like I, I don't know what that is it's like there's no when they're 
not hate anything, but you become kind of... It just of, dilutes the product. Your enjoyment, it goes down with pretty much anything that you have to pay for every single month. And it doesn't seem to matter the amount. Yeah. Because you're constantly reminded of the thing. I, I don't know. It, it's an odd no, psychology. It's, it. it's an odd psychology to it. I like the number of people I talk to. They're like, "I'm gonna cancel my Netflix. I'm gonna cancel it." Especially for 68 horsepower, it's not like um, it would change your life. Yeah, you know. I mean, there's a few things, right? There's a few things that we're willing to pay for monthly, and we deal with it. Your your, your cell phone bill, your uh, rent, mortgage, uh, and car payment. But certainly when we get down the list and we get into 68 horsepower entertainment services, a little like slight little extras, people start to to get on uh, slightly more uncomfortable. And certainly some of these automotive ones have made people feel that way. But you're right. Well, another way of looking at it is like, hey, let me let me try out full self-driving before I commit to it. It's a big that one's a really big payment. Mm -hmm. And according to Elon, it's only going to go up. So. Yeah. All right, last story. Uh, Gray's Anatomy. This is actually the wrong story. Oh, I was going to say, I don't know anything about these, this stuff here. Well, <laughs> you got me, it caught me off guard here on DailyMail.com, oh, which I have no exposure to. You're sure you're recording this episode, right? <laughs> Are you, is this episode... We'll find out tomorrow. Oh, uh, okay. Um, if it's on Lou later. Um, but yeah, remember this story? A woman who married a rag doll claims their relationship is hanging on by a thread. <laughs> <laughs> After he, back. he cheated by texting another woman. I mean, why would she stop at this point? Because you're getting... It's working, right? You're... You're having definitely working for us. All types of uh, people invested in here, and so why stop there? You, 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 the story keeps going. A woman who married the rag doll. You may remember this from this show. Uh, I didn't expect to have so many updates on it. To be quite honest, <laughs> I thought I thought when I first saw the story, I thought it was a one and done. Uh huh. It's not a one and done. But he, we were like he was trying to get a job. But he didn't want to work. So is this the so third we update whole... we've had on this? No, this is just the second. Are you sure about yeah. that? I think it might be the third. <laughs> oh, really? I think he, he had I... a... The ragdoll had a baby and... Yeah, it was... Uh, I mean, the clip exists if you want to start from scratch on this topic. But where we're at now is we are talking about uh, a doll. And it, I'm sure... The language here is on purpose, hanging on by a thread. Yeah, know, the doll made of made of threads, and uh, the word is that he has been texting other women. Yeah, and so therefore, uh, causing causing pain and suffering uh, for the spouse. Uh, she found texts on his phone, the doll, the rag doll. Yeah. And uh, those are incriminating texts. Marcelo is potentially cheating. Maybe they can seek counseling. I hope so. And uh, if not for them, then for the kids. Yeah. Because don't forget there was a birth as well. 35-minute uh, birth, if you remember the photos from the original story. I hope that... Um they can really figure it out. They're currently sleeping in separate beds after the texts were discovered. She's a breadwinner. <laughs> She's the only breadwinner. <laughs> he's not helping with the bills at all. Oh. And he's texting other women while he's over there. Poor guy. So, uh, Poor woman. You know, they need to figure uh, it we out. Wish them the, we, we wish them the best. Yeah. Uh, we, we hope that they can uh, sort this one out. And hopefully more updates coming soon because <laughs> this is a great story. I, I love it. I, I'm cheering for them. I want them to be happy. You're their number one fan. You're the yeah. most. No one is as invested as you, Will, in the 
in the uh, ragdoll saga. Yeah. The saga continues. Wu Tang. Shout out to everybody who joined us here today. But we do uh, truly appreciate it. Shout out to Will for recording this episode. Um, well, it remains to be seen if this is going to become, uh, if you're actually going to be able to watch this at any point in time. We're fingers are crossed. Yeah, that this one makes it out in, uh, on the air and into the universe. And if it doesn't, it will remain recorded solely in our minds. 